let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. Penny McCoy went from being a world champion and pretty penny in alpine skiing at the age of 16 to experiencing heartbreak and worldwide humiliation in the following Olympics. This set Penny into a tailspin of brokenness, affecting every area of her life. She took on the identity of ugly duckling, making wrong choice after choice, leading to a life of failure, heartbreak, and loss. Penny is now a vibrant vessel, fulfilling her God-breathed destiny by sharing God the Father's heart of life, freedom, healing, faithfulness, and unfailing love through her gifts and talents. It's her hope the captive is set free and the broken become whole so they can be who God created them to be and do what God created them to do. Penny McCoy, the author of I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth, a book she hopes will be a launching pad to destiny and freedom, is back with us on This Week in America. Hi, Penny. Welcome back to the program. It's great to have you with us once again. Thank you, and it's great to be here with you. And by the way, the video of this will be up on our YouTube channel or you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and actually uh, see the two of us talking here. Penny's in uh, the bright sunshine uh, at home today, and I thank you for taking the time to be back with us again and talk about this very important and powerful book. Why did you decide to write the book? What was the purpose as you decided to to write this book? Um, first of all, before I begin, I'd like everyone to understand that the book is written from the perspective of God's heart as our father to our hearts as his children. And with that in mind, the main feature of the book is an issue of identity. It is a book recognizing, first of all, the identity of God, as, and then second of all, the identity of us as people, as individual people. If the enemy can change or destroy identity, then he has us. His main goal, and I I preface this in the book all through, but his main goal is to destroy God's identity and thereby hopefully rendering God powerless and dead. But we all know that won't happen because God is God. But so with that in mind, his next goal is to destroy our identity as people to where we become broken vessels to the extent of becoming objects. And if that happens, we become worthless. We're worthless for society. We're worthless for ourselves. We're worthless. We just take on that identity of worthless, worthlessness. And by way of example, I was talking to my grandchildren one day, and they were telling me about a few of their classmates who have decided that they aren't people anymore, that they are neither male nor female, but they're objects. They've got to the extent of, of becoming an object, and the one became an object of a table. Now, it's really important to understand that if we become objects, we become irrelevant and insignificant and unimportant. And this book focuses on our significance and our relevance and our importance. So in lieu of today's issues, I think I can bring in the point that if we apologize for our God-given identity or who God created us to be and what he created us to do, we are apologizing for God's infinite wisdom. We are actually questioning, questioning his infinite wisdom that created us in his image. And what I want everybody to know is that there really is a God who loves us and his love is shrouded in holiness and truth. And it is through that holiness and truth that his love comes to us. Penny McCoy is back with us on the program. She's the author of the book, I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. The book's available at stratton-press.com in their book section. You'll find it at Amazon, the usual places. Go to our website. You'll uh, be able to link on directly, get information on Penny's book. Penny, what do you hope to, uh, to achieve with this book? Um. Most of all, I hope to achieve uh, that people see how God truly sees them. That no matter what they've done wrong, no matter how evil they are or have been, or, or the shame that they live in, or the regrets, or the guilt, or the anger, 
or any other of those emotions and things that aren't God, no matter any of those things that tear down their identity, uh, that those things are not greater than God's love and forgiveness for him. And really, I hope to achieve that people understand that, that we as, his chil- as God's children are his focus, that we always have been, and that we are now, and that we always will be his focus. And in essence, uh, we are the apple of his eye. So I see this right now as a fatherless generation. And in the midst of this fatherless atmosphere, I believe that there's a pervading orphan spirit in the world today. People feel like they're forgotten. They feel like they they aren't loved or important. And it doesn't matter. But in the end, it doesn't matter what we feel over what God feels. And the truth is, God feels we're important, and he's a good father on our behalf. The book is I Am Amidst You Now by Penny McCoy, our guest on the program. Book available at stratton-press.com in the book section. Of course, Amazon. And go to our website. You'll be able to link on and get all the information on the book. Penny, what would you say would be the main feature of the book? If you were talking to somebody about the book, what's the, what's the core book would you, would you tell them? Well, uh, once again, I think the main feature focuses on the issue of identity. But the main feature of the book is God. God's heart is our father to our hearts as his children. And, it, it, and he wants to express his heart to us and give us a revelation of his heart to us so that our hearts can be set free. And, and in that place that our heart is set free, we can become healed and whole. And when we become healed and whole in that area, then in that area, we can be released. Our feelings of who we should be and what we should do or or the circumstances or the people that are around us and their feelings and their demands of who we should be and what we should do goes out the window. And it's all about who God created us to be and what he created us to do so we can fulfill our destiny, bringing him glory on the earth today. Because let's face it, there will be a time in the Bible that talks about that time where there will be an awareness of the glory of the Lord that will cover the earth as the water covers the seas. And I believe we're entering into that time. It's more of a kingdom time. This is such an important book and has touched so many people worldwide. Is there, is there a specific target audience you had in mind as you were writing I Am Amidst You Now? Yeah, actually, um, the target audience is God's children. And in light of that, everyone of all ages and nations and races and, and status in life uh, are God's children in the sense that God created each of us. So we are his children, no matter if we're rich or poor, or no matter if we are fearful or secure or insecure or weak or strong or fulfilled or destitute or proud or humble um, or young or old or in between. And we are his children, no matter if we are, quote, and I put this in quotes, powerful or influential, whether we're homeless on the street or we live in the most elaborate castle on earth or whether we're a prince or a pulper or whether we're 150 years old or a child in the womb, to make my point, because I believe God can, you know, he converses with us in the womb. I mean, to that extent. So we're a child. So in in that sense, um, God's heart as our father is targeted to everyone. But of course, you have to read now and you have to be able to see it. Yes. But, Yes. But you understand what I mean. It's targeted to all people that will pick it up. <laughs> Interesting. You mentioned uh, we are his children. What do you hope to convey to us as his children? In that perspective, what is the message you want us to, to take away after reading I Am Amidst You Now? Okay. Well, I hope that when, when I convey what I want to con- convey, that people, when they pick up the book, they feel safe in opening and reading it that they're not threatened in any way. Like you can pick up some books and they're more condemning or what have you. And that's not the case in this one. And in this broken and hurting world with a misunderstanding of the real true heart of God for them, I hope it gives them a revelation of his love for them. And I hope that it touches 
even the largest skeptic and agnostic and, if you will, God and Jesus hater, and that they will be suddenly be led by the Spirit of God to pick up the book and read it and allow it to speak to them. And in that, it changes their night to his day and their darkness to his light and their hopelessness to his hope and their lies to his truth that can set them free. I hope it's really a seed that is planted in the midst of the lies they believe and that that seed can break up that ground to where the truth of his healing and freedom and love for them can come in. And I really hope that people get a sense of knowing their God-given destiny and calling and that they have a rich inheritance in that. And that in that, they learn a greater magnitude of his love for them, that it's literally all consuming, that the height and the depth and the breadth and the width of his love for them as father is eternal and it's unconditional and it's unfailing. And he's always, always faithful with his love for us. And I really hope most of all that they understand that Jesus is Lord and that God the Father and Jesus are one and that Jesus is the only way to the Father. He's the only way and truth and life, really, when it comes right down to it. Penny McCoy is our guest on This Week in America. Her book is I Am Amidst You Now, book available at stratton-press.com in the book section. Find it Amazon, the usual places. Uh, you mentioned a few minutes ago, the true heart of God is our Father. Can you take a couple minutes and, and explain that a little bit more? There's so many interesting facets we're talking about, and time is going by so quickly, so I'll suggest you you listen, and then you buy the book so you can get uh, get all the details, everything that, uh, that Penny has in the book. But uh, if you will, just expand on that a little bit more. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing, Rick. That's okay. That happens. That <laughs> okay. happens. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, um, yes, expanding on that, I believe there's an absence of the father in, in the world at large today, in the home and in the world at large. And because of that, there's a deep void of a father's validation and encouragement to their children. And so it is difficult for people to imagine that a heavenly father can be any different. So Everyone goes through the identity of brokenness at one time or another. For me, my identity became brokenness, and that's where I made my choices from. But through a personal relationship with God, um, things are starting to be put back together, and I feel, you know, my life is on track now for destiny. But in lieu of all this, people that are not validated feel like they're disappointments, and then they think they're a disappointment to God or dis God's disappointed in them. But he isn't disappointed in you. You aren't worthless or unimportant. You're so valuable to God and so precious to him that actually he sent his son that bought you with a price. And he didn't buy you for the purpose of being his slave or property, property but he bought you so you could be redeemed back to the father. And that's the real heart of God is our father. And we have to understand, though, in the midst of this, that we all have a choice. We can either receive God and accept him for who he is or reject him. And the choice is ours to make. And you and I are no different than this, not you or me, Rick, or anybody else. But as we make the choice, whether we're going to receive God the Father, be sure that all other gods are frauds in the midst of it. Penny McCoy, our guest on the program, author of the book, I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. So much in the title of the book, Healing My Truth. Talk about that a little bit, if you would, please. Yes. Well, God's truth um, nowadays has been, and, and through time, has been twisted and convoluted and corrupted to the point where evil is called good and good is called evil. I mean, that's the way it is nowadays. And this world or the world system or the satanic, uh, satanic regime, so to speak, is on a relentless quest to perpetrate the lies and deception or its lies and deception in every facet of life. And the greatest lie perpetrated is, is that God is dead, that he doesn't care or see or see and he doesn't care what happens to us and that he doesn't hear the cries of his children. But we know that those are all lies. Um, those are not the truth. And the key here is that actually the quest uh, of the enemy 
is to make people believe that God doesn't exist. But my book focuses on the truth that he's alive and he does exist. The truth is very much alive and he is very much alive with eyes that see and ears that hear and a mouth that speaks with a voice that confronts evil in all forms. And I believe this is an era like no under, no other era where his voice will be heard above the voice of the enemy and the lies and deception it perpetrates. And his voice in this time is going to be the voice of truth and justice. And it's important to know that lies last for a moment, whether that moment is a thousand years, but eventually the truth stands the test of time. If the enemy can convince the world that God is de dead or never has been, or that there's never been a cross or resurrection, it will negate everything else God is or has done. Um, or so the enemy thinks. But just because someone believes those things or that God isn't alive doesn't mean it is true. Um, God supersedes all other powers, and I, I make that very clear in my book. Every other God or agenda fails um, in the midst of, of God and what he has done through his son and the crucifixion, the cross and crucifixion. Um, so the strongest how I can put it is the strongest strength of man's strength is far, far infinitely weaker than God's weakest, weakest, weakest weakness could ever be. And he has no weakness. So um, it is really time to understand that the living God has all authority and power to make nations tremble. And I make that clear in, in my book. And I, I have a scripture that I really like. Uh, concerning this and it's in, and concerning the times that we're living in and it's in psalm 33 8 through 10 and it says let everyone in the world fear the lord and let everyone stand in awe of him for when he spoke the world began it appeared at his command the lord shatters the plans of the nations and thwarts all their schemes but the lord's plans stand firm forever his intentions can never be shaken what joy for the nations whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen for his own. And by the way, I bless America with that declaration and with that scripture. That's so powerful. Penny McCoy, our guest on the program. Boy, time going by quickly. A few minutes left and so much more here to talk about. I want to go back to you mentioned that God is not only alive and risen, but that he has all authority and the power to make nations tremble. Explain that, if you will. Um, I just believe that God, as in the miracle times of old, the biblical miracles that were entering, that really caused people to recognize God, that we're going to enter in that time of the kingdom. We're in the kingdom age now. We're entering into the kingdom where it's going to be God's governing. It's going to be God's voice. It's going to be God shaking and exposing himself. He's going to be exposing the the devil so to speak the enemy of our souls and he is going to be uh, um, showing himself as the mighty god that he is with miracles and signs and wonders of of biblical science such of old and in that it's really gonna it's gonna cause a trembling i mean people their schemes from nations and their all their plans and what they put together he's gonna shatter them and i don't know how he's going to do it, but I believe it's going to be so miraculous that they're going to tremble in their boots. He's actually going to to um, get them. He's actually going to call their bluff, and he's actually going to go, checkmate. And, and it's going to be through miracles, really, signs and wonders. The book is a must-read. Penny McCoy, I am amidst you now. God the Father, Healing My Truth. Book at stratton-press.com. The books, Amazon, all of the... The usual places. In your book, you've got 10 distinct messages. What would you say would be, let's say, the top two and, and why? Um, well, for for the, the sake of time and for the sake of the day, um, I'd like to focus on crucified. And crucified really is, it's a word and it's a message from God's heart that that he, he sorrows. He, he sorrows and he 
he um, weeps over his children and the lack of honor, or, and maybe that's not the right word, but the lack of concern and care and respect for what he has actually done for us, that he's given everything for us. And um, so I'd like to focus on that and sure. and read a little excerpt in that because I know we, we're losing time. But if I read a little excerpt, I think it'll, it'll say what needs to be said. Yes, please do. Yeah, and this is from his heart. And he says, how easily it is to forget the price I paid. Rampant is the wavering with no thought of the fee upon my head. It wasn't a crown of jewels that graced my brow. It was the crown of thorns shrouding my dignity, marring me with humility and disgrace. Please consider, do you even really care? Oh, how easy it is to forget the cross because I am on the other side. Consider the cross as the weapon that opened the door to my resurrection and your salvation. I am amidst you now, healing my truth, so the lie will be found out. The truth is, I paid the price no one else could. I overcame the grave, suffered the shame, wore the pain, took on humility's face, offered my spirit in faith, gave up my will for my father's instead, and loved you to the grave and rose again. The truth is, I spared nothing. For your sake. That's from Penny's book that we're talking about. I am amidst you now, God the Father, healing my truth. Penny McCoy, if you go to our website, you'll get information on the book available at the, the places where books are sold. I'm going to take an extra couple minutes and squeeze another question in here because there's so much <laughs> we, we want to talk about. In the book, you've got a battle going on. Talk yes. about that battle and what does it, more importantly, I guess, what does it mean for us today? Are there implications? today for us yes um I, the battle going on is the battle between uh the voices and it's the voices of deception and witchcraft and evil of every form versus the voice of life and truth it's it's a battle between the darkness and the light not darkness and light but the darkness and the light it's really uh, it, in 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 the world today, it's a voice of the battle of the spirit of peace or the spirit of shalom, where there's nothing lacking versus the spirit of Ra, as, as in the Bible times, which is really a spirit of disorder and chaos and tyranny where the bullies take over. And so it's a battle, really it's a battle of the good news versus the fake news. And I mean that in more than just television news, if you yes. understand what I mean. Yes. It's really a face-off. It's a face-off between the, the light and the dark. And in the world today, um, the darkness is going to overplay their hand and they're going to be exposed and the light's going to be switched on. And just like when you walk in a room and people are doing whatever they're doing, if it's dark and you flip on the switch, it's going to expose what they're going to do, what they're doing, and they're going to go, ah, and they're going to stop probably and they're going to flee like cockroaches when you turn the light on. <laughs> so... Um, it's important that we remember, we remember in the midst of the chaos and disorder and confusion, that is opposite of the heart of God. That is not his spirit. And that his spirit is really the true light. And God is still his spirit. And he is still the true God. And in the end, in the situation today, the darkness uh, will succumb to God's truth and and God's victory. God will be victorious over the disorder and chaos and all that the, the darkness is trying to battle with, whether we believe it or not. I've got about a minute or so left here. Sort of sum up, if you will, and it's unfair to okay. ask this with not a whole lot of time, but I talk okay. about what you hope people take away from reading okay. the book, I Am Amidst You Now. What do you hope? Okay. What do you hope the tape, the takeaway is for the for the reader? I hope the takeaway for the reader is that they understand that that God's intense love and passion for them, and that He wants more for them than they want for themselves. It might be in a different way than they think, and that it births a, a births inside of them a love for God so much so that they are willing to give up their lives for them, and and ultimately, Rick. I hope and pray and declare that this book and the message in it is a father's, is God the father's 
um, blessing to the people that read it. And you have an interesting uh, way that you're going to handle the proceeds from the book, mm-hmm. I Am Amidst You Now. Talk about mm-hmm. that. Yes. Um, I've made a covenant with God and about him that, uh, because I believe this is his heart's to go to the outer ends of the earth. So I'm hopeful that it will be translated in other languages and nations. And wherever the books are sold and the money comes from, the proceeds from those books, I want to pour back into that nation, into the children of the nation, whether it's the children in uh, care centers for the elderly or children that are unwed mothers in places for unwed mothers or orphanages or, you know, anything like that. Where because we're all God's children. So I, I would, if the money comes from the Philippines, I want to pour it back there. If it comes from France, I want to pour it back there to make my point. Well, as a reader in buying the book, you're going to enrich yourself and you're going to be helping, as Penny talked about, the uh, children and people in, in the countries where the book sales originated. Uh, I'm going to take another 30 seconds here. Wrap up. Give me in a sentence or two. Boy, that's difficult. I keep asking you these very difficult questions all with the time limit. But <laughs> in, in a couple of <laughs> couple of sentences, uh, summarize what the book is about. What uh, okay. what you would what you would say to somebody to to enrich their lives with this book. Okay, um, I would sum it up in a couple of phrases, and that is. But remember. It's, it from the perspective of God's heart when I say this. And it would be, I am not dead, I'm alive, and I am risen, and you are forgiven. So well said, and I it's been so much fun having you back on the program. It was always a, a time of enlightenment, discernment for us, and I appreciate you being back with us. And uh, I, a great video. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, the video tab, you'll find it. We're up on YouTube. And, of course, all the uh, usual places, the radio, and as well as all the podcasting networks. The book, Penny's book, is I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth. Penny McCoy is the author. The book's available at Amazon, Stratton-Press.com, and the bookstore, wherever books are sold. And you can get all that information by going to our website. Penny, it is always a pleasure. Good luck with the book. You're touching and life-changingly touching a lot of people out there all around the world. Thank you for sharing your message with us on the program today. Always a pleasure to have you with us. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Penny. The book is I Am Amidst You Now, God the Father, Healing My Truth by Penny McCoy. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.